Hello everyone and welcome to another video. It's Francesco here. What I'll be doing in this video is something slightly different. I'll be reviewing Evernote. And although I obviously focus on Evernote a lot of the time, the context here is using Evernote as a student. So as you guys know, I'm a student at Plymouth University and uh, I've been a student there for about four years now. Um, and I've been using Evernote two years before that as well. So around about five years in total. Now what I wanted to do today is go over some of the tips and tricks that I found have been useful useful for organizing my student life and also some of the work and uh, projects around that. I'm also going to cover how I use Evernote in a daily usage. Obviously I did a video about that with Todoist recently, I'll include that up here. And also I'm going to be focusing on some of the benefits of obviously using it as a student. Just a few things to mention before you start the video, if you're looking uh, to sort of get some advice that is outside of student stuff, that's absolutely fine. This video should help with some of the sort of projects, you know, all of them can apply to different work situations, etc. So if you find value, that'll be good. The other thing as well is that I'm giving away three Evernote premium subscriptions. So all you need to do is comment with some of the features you like inside of Evernote already, and you'll be automatically entered to the giveaway, which is quite good. Also, just to add on and be annoying, there is a student offer at the moment on Evernote. So they're running it until the 31st of October, 2016. Watching before then, and you are a student, you can look to see whether you're eligible for, I think it's 75% off, which is massive. So uh, the link will be in the description. If you manage to catch it, you catch it. If you don't, then try for the giveaway. Anyway, guys, let's get stuck in. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna firstly review it on the MacBook and then I'm gonna come over to the iPhone, show you a few tips and tricks on both of those devices. Let's get stuck in. So here we are on the Mac version. What I do with my notebooks is sort of organize them in a very sort of crunch style. So as you can see, um, I break it down into four stacks. And stacks are basically folders in folders. I'll include a video in this video here, which explains all the way um, that I organize my notebooks. I don't want to go into too much detail here. I sort of want to give you the uh, another video to go and set them up. But what I want to do is dive into some of the notebooks. So as you can see here in projects, these are anything from one to 12 months. I've actually created a university section. And this basically is for introductory lectures, uh, <coughs> introductory lectures. Uh, handbooks and also just general lectures that are for my course in general so sort of managing those sorts of things anyway one one thing that I really highly recommend for any student at university is having a sort of holistic plan of all of the work that you are doing at the moment sometimes you sort of have to memorize or just write a list of some of the projects and work that you're working on at the moment um, and sometimes that's a bit sort of ad hoc so what I've done is created this academic uh, sort of like breakdown of what I need to do for the year. So as you can see here, I've got my modules on the left hand side. I've got the name of the modules so I can sort of bring back some context. And I've got the breakdown of exactly what I need to do. In so the thing I include in there is how many words it is, what the due date is, so when it's due in for, and how much percentage is it of my grade um, or of that project, like per coursework part. This is a really good way because all I need to do now is if I want to sort of visualize any project at any given time, or I just want to sort of get an idea of where I am in the, in the process, am I like 80% there or like 70%, I can just view this and then I can get an understanding of where I am. I recommend it. It's sort of like holistical planning for university. So once you create that university notebook, there's also an opportunity for you to create some sub notebooks. So for example, here's my marketing one. I haven't actually organized it into notebooks yet, but all you do is across a year, obviously monitor your progress by capturing each lecture. So as you can see here, I've got a few, um, I've got you know, lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, lecture four, there's a double one and lecture five here. That's one thing I should have done here. Uh, when I was making new notes, I should have put lecture five. The important thing here is to keep a good track of how well you're titling. So make sure you're titling pretty good so that when you come to searching in a revision situation, you can come back to it and actually find where you left off. The other thing as well is making sure that you've got some good context inside your notes. The my top rule is the richer the better. 
Every time you obviously make a note and you want to add some more context, all you have to do is go up into the note and add any of the files, video recordings, images, audios, absolutely anything. There's even Google Drive attachment. But the one thing you need to do is obviously make the richer the better because when it comes to revision, obviously you're going to remember some visuals, you're going to remember some videos, you're going to remember some audio, and that's why it's important. So the richer the better when it comes to this. The good thing inside of Evernote as well is you can actually insert lecture slides straight away. So if you're downloading them from your sort of university and then downloading them onto here, you can actually view them pretty easily through an Evernote portal, which saves you downloading them again and reopening them on PowerPoint, especially if you've got a Chromebook because it saves so, save so much time. So Quick Look does allow you to quickly see that at a glance, which does, uh, honestly, it saves you so much time. So that's what a general project looks like. Um, Obviously, it's trying to keep it sort of clean. As you can imagine, I've only just started the year, so I'm in October. This gets a little thicker and a little heavier, and that's when you can be using things like tags. So tags are essentially things to help you label for later. Um, you can actually access them at the top. On the web, it's very simple to add any of the tags. But what you can do here is if you wanted a specific thing like, you know, uh, marketing, uh, MKT, 315 revision that will tag that there and then anything across the board so if I tagged anything in university or that project or in other notebooks that I found relevant and I captured information but that might have been in a different project folder that brings them all together if you simply hit tags you can then go into a uh, sort of overview of all of the tags you have once you hit that no matter what the project is you can actually see all of the notes relevant to that tag that could be applicable across all the areas. So if you have anything that's relevant to general revision in June, then you can bring them all together and sort of have them at a glance. You can also filter based on that once you're inside this area, which is pretty cool. The other thing I'd recommend for students is creating something called an inbox. And for those who don't know, an inbox just allows you to capture all of the information at any given time. Especially for those on the go, once you have an inbox, you can sort of dump everything in there and then process it for later, maybe at the end of the week or at the end of fortnightly, and you can put them all in the relevant notebooks. This is a great way in case you're making quick notes on your smartphone, iPhone, um, or you're actually just wanting just to dump in loads of stuff or, or you just want to capture things as you go. Uh, it's a great way for you to review it. I've made a separate video about how to capture stuff in your inbox, and what I'll do is I'll include it up here as well so you can go and view it. Um, but it's a really, it's a game changer. It's really an opportunity for you to sort of capture everything and then process it for later. So as I said, I want to demo some of the tips on iPhone. So I've got an iPhone here and obviously this works exactly the same on Android as well. So you can download it from there and pretty much the features are exactly the same. But what I recommend for, it's recommended straight away to obviously set up some shortcuts. So all you need to do when you set up shortcuts is essentially star your notebooks or notes or tags. This is a great way for you to see them at a glance. So if I'm in a rush and I'm on the train and I want to review exactly what my academic year looks like or anything of the sort, useful information, inbox, everything, anything you want. You can have your study, your, your revision notes as you go. Anything that you want to pin to the top of your stuff, all you have to do is save it in the shortcuts and it will take you right there. To access this and sort of set this up, all you need to do is go into settings, customize home screen, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna drag this one to the top because it obviously makes it even more relevant. So as I go out and I go onto my home bit, as you can see, shortcuts are at the top, nicely saved and pinned there. So the other thing I also do is, obviously when you're creating a note, what you can do, and what I recommend for lectures, is recording your lecture. Obviously you have to ask for permission this time, so you, know, you just have to pull your lecture to a side and say, is it okay if I record, leave my phone here, and sort of take some notes. And all you do for that is when you create a new note, all you do is give Evernote access and permission uh, to the voice recording feature, and then you can essentially just have that recording. I recommend this more than the Mac version because it's better at picking up sound than the actual Mac because I tried it on Mac a couple in my first few lectures and it didn't work very well. So recommend it for iPhone uh, or Android phone, just leave the smartphone at the front. The good thing as well is obviously it's got this playback feature, so if you just want to plug your headphones in on the way home and sort of like listen to all of the notes you've made, then you can do that quite easily. Okay, so the next thing is reminders, and this is something that I think can be really beneficial. Obviously, I don't recommend it above task management, 
but it's a good way if you have some context points that you can tag in information. So if, for example, I'm in a lecture and I want um, some notes from the previous lecture to pop up, uh, what you can do is you can essentially just remind yourself at that time. So let's say I've got an agenda here or let's say I've got my not to be video that was coming up. Let's say this was a lecture note. All I have to do is hit the bottom left and uh, what you can do is change the day. This is really good because you can actually be very specific about the time that it lands as well. And you'll just get buttons on your smartphone or your computer just saying that you need the, this note to be reminded, which is really cool. Um, I've used it a couple of times for meeting agendas, things like that. And it's also a nice way to sort of pin notes to the top of your feed, uh, which is quite cool. So recommend giving it a try. See what it, you know, how you use it in context, and obviously learn from that and see whether it's any benefit. Another thing I recommend is obviously inside of Evernote, as I was mentioning, it's easier to add sort of rich media. So as you create notes, um, do add in photos from your smartphone. It's easier for you to upload them by Evernote here than it is to upload it uh, onto the Mac. So normally, if you wanted to get it to the Mac and then upload it to Evernote you just have to airdrop it and send it over to the Mac and then download it from the Mac into Evernote. But with this, obviously, it's got um, that storage straight away. So you can start uploading photos when and where you like. It's a good way for you to sort of capture that information. As long as you put a nice title on it that you can find later, then Evernote will help you find it later on in search. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. <clears throat> so obviously what I'll be doing is I'll include all of the links and information in the description about Evernote and the giveaway and the student thing and everything like that. So if you need any assistance with anything, then everything's there. My email will be in the description if you want to drop me a line too. Anyway guys, thank you very much. I hope you are all well. Stay productive, do like and subscribe and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.